Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm Dana Alexa, and today I'm doing something a little different. I'm doing a Q&A with my parents. We got Papa Carl. Hello, can you say hi? Hi. Oh, and Mama <laughs> Janet. Hi, everyone. Who are you looking at? You gotta look here. I think I said hello. You did it. Not good. And then, okay, so as you can see, it's gonna be totally unscripted. I did a Q&A on Instagram, and I asked you guys some questions that you might have for them or for us as a family. My dad is going to be moving his mouth and pretending to be talking the whole time that I'm talking, so just try to tune that out. Um, so let's get started. Yeah, you guys ready? They have not. They have no idea what questions I'm going to ask them, so R.I.P. with these answers. Okay, ready? First question. Hello, are you oh. ready? Why yeah, you, you gotta ask me a question. Okay, what right. I mean? No, talk the, the whole the, time you're talking. The first question was, "Are you ready?" Yes. And you, you didn't say anything. I didn't know that was a question. I thought Are you were talking ready? to the people. Did you get rid of the double chin? How can I be talking to them? You're the ready. only people. Oh, I thought this was a Q&A. They were going to ask us. It's not. They're not. It's not live, Dad. She's oh, I thought you said it was the live. Question, no, yeah. I'm, the question is <laughs> submitted before. <laughs> okay. Question number one. Ready? Ready. How did you raise such an independent, successful, mindful woman? <laughs> you have a sister? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand him. It, it, God, you did you raise, tell him he's going to answer the you question? You don't raise somebody. You, ho you hope <laughs> what you teach them, they raise themselves. <laughs> it's hard to raise an independent person when you're watching over them, telling them what to do. You have to cut enough slack and just make sure they don't fall that hard. <laughs> and then you bring them back and then you cut them on more slack. And, and you bring you, them back. Are you rapping? And you bring them back. And you cut them more slack. <laughs> and then you hope. Hope for the best. You just that's it. The and then you My just... parents weren't like super strict. They always like would speak to me like I was an adult and kind of trust me and ask me my opinion and trust me to make my own decisions. They weren't like, you know, telling me always I had to do this without speaking through it and explaining it to me and led me to like make my own decisions even from when I was young. Okay. Question two. How many grandchildren do you guys want to have? Keep I'll start with low. one. Okay, one, maybe one someday. <laughs> Let's go one, and then I'll worry we'll about the rest. How, okay. how about you, Jan? I go three. Three? You want three? Jeez. Good, you're going to have to have another child to have some kids for you. I'm an only child, by the way, in case anyone out there doesn't know. I am one of one. Um, yeah. What's an important lesson you tried to install early on? Uh, you are better than no one, and no one is better than you. Next question, Jan, Dana. What have you learned from Dana? Oh Unconditional love. Oh, yeah. I learned a lot of things from Dana. Now I'm learning new vegan styles of eating. <laughs> but um, I think I learned. <laughs> What's the craziest thing you've done? Who? Oh. Is done. You guys, crazy. Oh, there's too many things. This is with a... her involved or no? With you involved? No, it doesn't have to be with me. Oh involved. boy. Go ahead, go. You go. <laughs> I, I was an altar boy. I, I think one of the craziest thing you mean we've done as a couple. That's what I'm a little confused. Well, you're confused, all right. What's the craziest thing they've done? Is that to, for you? Uh, no. It's all right. So I'm going to say one of the craziest things we did together was when we went to Jamaica. And we walked up that hill, that straight up hill. That wasn't a hill, it was a waterfall. waterfall. It was a waterfall Guns, straight Guns up. Fall. And that big football player. It's from the Patriots. Pushed me up by the butt. Bruce Armstrong. Yeah, I had his arm. He's the size of three men. He had was holding my butt, pushed me up the Because he was afraid to climb up the, the falls. I was, that so was he asked crazy. me, can, I, can I help your wife? I said, sure enough. And he picked her up. <laughs> and flung her up the top of the thing. Crazy. That was crazy, crazy. I don't know. You know. I th I still don't know what's the craziest thing. Oh, you know. We did a lot of crazy things. I didn't do any crazy Driving thing. in areas where we got lost and... That's not crazy. We That's did lost. a lot of crazy <laughs> things. I was an altar boy. What the hell does that mean? I, was not, I, I did everything by the book. Next question. <laughs> that was a lie for you. <laughs> How does it feel that Dana has over 2,000 kids? What? Who? <laughs> Who, Dana? You? 2,000. You have 2,000 children? 
Well, where's the grandchildren? I can't get four out of that crowd? <laughs> you said three. I want four. Then. They're saying, like, how does it feel that I have so many kids? Like, my students and people that call me mom all over the place. I'm well, really, you know, I, I really do think that that's one of her biggest assets, is to be a mentor and be somebody that shows young women and men the value of their own life. Thanks, Dad. I knew that was good. I practiced. I also think, I'm going back to the other question, I oh think one of the lessons <laughs> that you always taught her that you forgot about, the main one was think like a man, but act like a woman. Always think like a man, but act like a girl. Remember? <laughs> I don't remember that. Okay. Anyway, over 2,000 kids, I love it. Like I said, just give me a few grandchildren, like four. <laughs> Any of those 2,000 want to come over to the grandchild side? <laughs> so pretty. What is uh, well, your like favorite food? Who's? Vegan pizza. What do you mean, who's? Do you understand that people have submitted questions for you both? Okay. So it's either him or you and both of you. So I'm not him, I'm dad. Okay. okay. I like that question. So what's yeah. your favorite food? Vegan pizza. That's not true, That's dad. I know, but I... I What's your favorite food? Hot dogs. I knew you were going to say hot dogs. <laughs> I knew it. What's your favorite food? Pasta. <laughs> Spaghetti. Just like me. And your favorite place to go? It was a two-part question. Italy. <laughs> Italy? Place to go? Italy. Yeah. I say the best place I like to go is... The hot dog stand. <laughs> probably... <laughs> Wherever Dana is. Oh, yeah. Aww, Dana. Aww. Has Dana ever taught you how to dance? This is a big one, Dad. Just taught you today, so don't um, say no. No, I've taught Dana how to dance. I Dad? Taught her how to, she taught me how to dance. I taught you how to dance today. If you guys want to see Dad on TikTok, you can follow me at Dana Alexa underscore. Dad hit the new, the new say so. He killed it. Kind of. Rocked it. Rocked it. It was... It was a little bit of a fight because he said he's more of a freestyler, so he was reluctant to learn choreography. <laughs> the front, though, because that, that's the oh. front. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you say so? so didn't and ears even and bounce, notice bounce and no punch punches got roll. to roll with it. Roll, roll, Dad, roll your hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then All right, then you have one more thing. Oh my God. <laughs> You got to keep it focused. What's you go like this to your head, your face, like you're like looking for something. Your face. Oh, make a frame, frame and then yes. you go out. Uh huh. Yep. And That's, then you can freestyle. That's it. And then you can do any dance you want. Okay. Yeah. Rehearsing. I'm exhausted. I take a nap now. <laughs> I thought you warmed up. We thought I, you were, I worked up a time. I thought night. you were the dancer that put the hop, and before I, you, it was just hip. I know. <laughs> I put the hop in the. I put the hip in the hop. Mm. Now I call it hip hop. Mm. I was only hip. That's right. So you, you should go. have enough stamina to get through no, this. No, I got the stamina, but you made me stretch out too much and, and exercise. I did dance. it like three hours. Nice. Dad, you want to tell us about your dance background? <laughs> I was hip. No. Before they had hop. Don't do it. I did it. <laughs> Dana has taught me to dance, but she doesn't know it because I've done tutorials in my gym. You learn my dance tutorials in your gym? I try. Which ones did you learn? Some of the older ones that are a little easier that I noticed in the beginning a little slower. I start at the gym if there's no one in there with me. You know mom's training to become a professional dancer in the gym? How do you feel about that? Okay. Next one. Do you like to dance? I'm a dancer. I was born a we dancer. We used to I dance was... a lot. I, I'm a hustler. Oh, a hustle dance. I'm definitely going to teach the disc. I'm bringing disco back. Let's see it. How would that look if you were to bring it back right now? I can't do it now. Yeah, I'm sitting can, down. I can do you it. You can show it. You, that mommy could she do can it. can do it. Let's see. You gotta hold hands. Make like you're doing a hustle with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was my hardest challenge? Yeah. Being a parent. Thanks. So it, it is the hardest it. job in the world and the biggest challenge. And if you don't take it serious, then it is what it is. Don't blame two. the child. What two. about you? What's yours? Two hardest challenges for me. One was letting you go to college. It was a terrible challenge for me. <laughs> Very bad. I couldn't wait. You don't remember me calling you at two in the morning? Crying. One, two, three in the morning, wondering where you were and <laughs> how many times you called daddy and said, dad, you got to take the phone away from her. I'm in the <laughs> library and she's calling me. That was a big challenge for me, letting go.
My other challenge was fighting breast cancer. That was my second hardest challenge. That was a big one. You, Mom fought cancer twice. Yep. So Dad thinks that raising me was harder than going blind, losing both kidneys, <laughs> losing having his... a double transplant. Because I, when you love something, you want it to be perfect. Aww. Yeah. How do you overcome disagreements? We don't. We never had. We never did. We disagree. We never disagree. We never, never disagree because we always disagree to disagree. We always agree to disagree. I don't know what that. That means. works, right? You will, what? We agree to disagree. Yeah. Usually we take a breath, uh -huh. walk away. <laughs> they're actually, I think, still. Where, where am I when you're still walking on the away? We're still on the I first think argument. They're still in the same fight that they started in 1986. Yeah, right. So the first just... argument, we're still running through it. Yes. So we'll let you know when it's over. <laughs> we still. How we <laughs> made it through. Okay. How hard was it when Dana left home to pursue her dreams? For me, it was opposite than Janet. To me, when some, that's why you have a child. So she chases her dream. Was it scary at times? Heck yeah. But was now looking back on it, it was all worth it. Mom, how hard was it? For me, it wasn't as hard as the college leaving. I, I knew that coming to Raleigh when we moved here and you went to California wasn't a possibility for you to follow your dreams here. And that was one of the only ways, the only places for you to go. And I knew that you were capable of taking care of yourself. Like your father said, I was worried that maybe you didn't in the beginning have enough money to do, get yourself settled, get a little petrified when the phone call came through that you were living with seven men. <laughs> Uh, there were a few okay, so that makes me sound like Snow White. But, <laughs> but you were. You were but Snow White yes, with the I seven did, I did live with seven men, but so my parents, okay, let's backtrack. My my parents moved to North Carolina right after I graduated from college or I was in college in Pennsylvania. And then I wanted to live in New York to try to pursue dance for a little while. I had an aunt that was still there. So I lived in New York and I commuted back and forth from New York and New Jersey and sometimes Pennsylvania. And then when I was done and I felt like I had done everything I could accomplish in New York, I flew to California. And when I first moved out to Cali, I really had no money. I got to California, I had $500 to my name, mm -hmm. period. I had nothing. And so I needed a place to live and I was talking to my friend at a restaurant and telling her, I really need some place to stay. Like I literally have nowhere to live. And behind me, I felt a tap on my shoulder and it was a guy and he was like, are you looking for a place to stay? And I was like, yeah. And he was, it was a group of seven guys. And he was like, it was eight actually. He was like, well, our friend is going, we're here celebrating his farewell. He's going to the Arctic to film a documentary for six months. Do That's you right. want to sublet his room? It's $150 a month in the house. And I was like, the price is right. <laughs> when can I see it? So they walked me down the street and I looked at the house, which actually was like an old hospital that had been converted like into a house, like an old hospice. And yeah, I, I stayed in his room while he was uh, away doing his job for the first six months I was out there. And if I hadn't done that, I don't know how I would have made it work. But My mom was a little concerned about that when I told her I was moving in with seven strange men that I'd met the night before at a restaurant. But she also... <laughs> Hoped for the best, and it was actually a really good experience. Yeah, it, was, it was. It was nice. It was. It wasn't bad at all. They Interesting. Wait, they waited. But yeah, so I think that my mom had a harder time when I left for college than when I left for Cali, actually. Yeah. Because by then they already knew I was like not gonna. Yeah, she <laughs> stop. was. I was nutty. Nutty. I knew so, you weren't prepared. I don't know. You were nutty. You were driven. Same. Same. How thing. your How does your dad deal with his vision issues, and what has been the biggest challenge for all of us with it? For so you first, Dad. How do you deal with your vision issues? Like everything else, you deal with it as it is. You take it one day at a time. You learn how to cope. You find different devices to help you. You've joined the community of blind people. I now work with the, the American Council for the Blind. I'm on the board. I work with the Lions Club, with the VIP, the visually impaired. And you learn different ways. You deal with what you have to deal with. It, I'm still here, I'm still happy. It's a challenge, and I wish it on no one, but God has a plan, and I'm willing to, to live it. And the help of my family and friends make it easier. He definitely has a really good, I think he's found all kinds of tips and tricks. He still, he always was like cooking and loved to cook before he started to lose his eyesight, and he hasn't let that stop him at all. He still cooks maybe now better than he did before when he had it's all true. of his sight. 
Um, so he's found a lot of tips and tricks and like little devices that can help him. Um, but also I think the most important thing is that he really keeps a good attitude about it. You can always find him laughing at himself if he does something wrong or, you know, he just, he keeps it light and, and helps us make light of it with him so that it's not, you know, so it's not so dark <laughs> as, as odd as that sounds, yeah. I guess, to say about yeah. blindness, but, <clears throat> we but just if, try to keep but it if light. you're blind, there's help out there. There's organizations, there's things to help you. You're not in the dark. There is light. Look for it on any of your problems, no matter what it is, you're never alone. Yeah, he's really good at like reaching out to other people and stuff as well and not like making this like such a negative like burden. He'll like look out and like reach his hand out to other people and try to form a community and whatever whatever he's facing really. And I think that's that's his asset and how he really overcomes challenges well. Yeah, I in think, general. I think the way he handles it is what makes it harder for me because I forget I actually forget sometimes that he doesn't see as well as I think he does. <laughs> I'll go out the door and think he's right behind me and the door will slam. Um, right. Or I'll go to walk him to a curb or down a curb and forget that he needs me at that certain point. Then I feel bad that I maybe forgot him or left him two steps behind. So I think his general good attitude with it has made it harder for me to make it easy for him so you, <laughs> you do know. a good job though. Uh, you guys seem banging we've all just walls. learned to move a little slower and to be a little more conscious and to be a little bit more patient and we do our best and we can what's your favorite memory together it could be like our favorite family memory i think okay Whoa. italy going to italy that's probably one of my favorite memories of us together Gotta i think we all agree with that because that was my bucket list, and I was I would had lost most of my sight, and I wanted to see where my family came from, and I got to go to where my grandfather was born, my the first um, person to come to America, and most of the town had names of my last name, yeah, and it was just was simply everywhere. amazing to feel that connection. I think this is where my grandfather played, and my ancestors played and fished, and. And now came all the way to this great country. It was amazing. They were fishermen? They were fishermen. He How come all... you're not a fisherman? Because I don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those of you who don't know, after I won the Amazing Race uh, like three or four years ago, the first thing that I did was I took both of my parents on a trip to Italy because I know it was someplace they always wanted to go. And actually, a couple of years before that, my mom had been sick with breast cancer. It was right before and I remember like so distinctly that while she was about to be wheeled in for her surgery, that my dad like, leaned over her and said that he promised that he was, that they would see Italy together. And it made me cry. And I, the first thing I wanted to do was take them and uh, repay some of what they had done uh, for me. And so I think that was our best experience. We had a lot of fun. It was wild. They, I, put them, wild. I put them through a trip because I wanted them to see so much of Italy in a short period of time. We Two must weeks. have been there like 10, 11 days. And we saw everything. We literally saw everything. We went from from Rome to Naples to my dad's, uh, my dad's grandpa's from Naples, a small town called Torre del Greco. So we went there. And then I took them down the Amalfi Coast. They went. We took a boat to Capri. We were in Salerno. Yeah. <laughs> we we went to Tuscany, to Pisa, we to went Florence, to, went to, to Venice. Naples the just amazing for a race. Piece of pizza. Yeah. So I, they were on trains. They were really, really good. Trains, we went on the boats, amazing race part two. Planes. Yeah. Cause. I think they had to take two weeks vacation after, after that vacation because I almost like took them out. But it was their first time in Europe, their first time that in was, Italy. I would so. do it all over the same way. Yeah, it was. That's actually a good example of me forgetting forget. that my dad was he, see, like seeing, wow, visually impared. <laughs> I literally forgot. And the first hotel that we booked, that I booked oh, in the God. Amalfi Coast, was like hanging off a cliff. And our hotel room was down like 40,000 cobblestone steps. Winding. <laughs> And my, we got there and my dad was like, it's beautiful, but didn't you tell them I can't see? And I was like, I forgot. Yeah, it was um, not if you could give yourself, your younger self, a piece of advice, what would it be and why? Whoa, that's heavy. <laughs> my I don't know. Self. I really wouldn't. I don't mm. think knowing anything, that's what the whole joy of being young is. Yeah. To experience every failure makes you better. Every adventure makes you who you are. And I'm happy who I am. 
So I wouldn't change anything. Yam. I would. <laughs> He's happy I, being I, a yam. <laughs> I am what I am. I'm, I'm Popeye. Happy a yam. <laughs> I like yams too. If I could give my younger self a piece of advice, my piece of advice would have been just don't sweat the small stuff. I remember very specifically being a teenager and thinking that things that happened to me in high school or in junior high even were like the end of the world. I would cry and I would not want to go to, to school and I developed like an anxiety disorder over things that looking back now were just really such small things in hindsight and I know how it feels at the time I still distinctly remember being that age and being a young a teenager and even a young you know in my young 20s and just yeah. feeling so much pressure that I was putting on myself over things that in the grand scheme of life and if you keep your if you keep your understanding that you're just kind of like a speck in the cosmos and your energy is just part of a whole if you keep that perspective and your perspective very large then you can stay a little bit calmer and when you operate from that place of calm you just things are better in general because you can be a better you know asset to the people around you because you're calm and you're present so i wish i had just known that you know life is long and the things that feel like the end of the world are usually just in your mind that way and in the reality of things See, it works itself out so different from me when i was young my younger self had not a care, not a worry. I was wild, happy, go lucky with everything I did. Friends all the time, dancing, partying. School, I kind of really didn't have too much stress. I mm -hmm. guess my parents. I think it's the I feel like thing. if you could have told your younger self something, though, you would have told your younger self to like just go for it. Because my mom had a lot of talents, yeah, like she loved so. to do crafts and she loved to like, she was very artsy and she always wanted to like start some kind of business or put her art out there. But she would kind of start and then never like follow all the way through. Yeah. And I think that she like always really wanted to do that. So I think that she is... would have just told her younger self to like, just do it and like stop worrying about it or asking so many questions or worrying about every Being practical thing. It. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take that step. Just like do it and follow through with it if it's something that you really like to do. Because she was super talented actually at a lot of the things. Well, she I even stopped dancing because I felt that I was getting too old and friends were making fun and like, oh, you're 18, you're not coming to the club, you have a dance class. Kind of let them... Talk you out a bit. Let, let them talk me out of following my dream, which... I, I I probably would have not done that. So, <laughs> so look who didn't do it. Yay. Thanks, Mom. Okay, what's your favorite video of Dana's? <gasps> oh, Dad, I don't think you can see any of my videos. Uh, yeah, I'm asking a blind guy what favorite video. I, one of my favorites is the jumping out of the plane one. I hate to say it. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I love you... the song they play. I love your I face. I made that video. I, I love the way that song. wind blows. The one in Fiji? Or the one that I did in Cali, my first one. The first one. The first one. She likes me jumping out of an airplane. So I never thought I'd hear my mother well, say that. Well, I love the video, the music. <laughs> like you jumping, you just like... Her face on that video and the way the wind was blowing. That was my rebirth. You put your hands like this and it was after that one year point of huh. that big change in your life. I, it just was a great feeling for me. For that. Yeah, this is the last question. Ready? How do you feel when you see Dana becoming an except more exceptional person every passing day? You guys are so nice, by the way. These questions, thank you. Yeah, these these sounds like I wrote them about beautiful. myself, but I'm going to insert them here so that people know that I didn't say that. They really are beautiful questions. So how start again. We, we, take, but, two, take two. Yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> how do you... How do you feel... When you see Data becoming more of an exceptional person every passing day. You see, that, what I'm trying to get at Let's... is she's Let's... always been an exceptional thing. When she was born, oh, yeah. to till the time she was two when she first walked, or when she would, when she would say words that nobody else could say. I, I don't think I don't I'm getting know. more and more. So I don't my dad see... always thought I was exceptional. I you think were. every father should think their child is exceptional. <laughs> And when you have a child that repays you by going out and being a a, a legitimate uh, person that helps others and is humble and kind, you mean. it's your legacy. So, Mom, how do you feel about it? I'm thinking the same thing. When you are, because you're growing so much and giving so much, you're becoming even more. 
is what I think. But you were always exceptional. Like Thanks, guys. Her IQ is exceptional. I'm, I have a high IQ, too. No, her I, IQ I, I, is at the IQ. top of the scale in kindergarten. Mine, too. Mine was out of the scale. That's why it left me back again. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> you gotta cut this all out of this video. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> proud. I'm so proud of everything you do. Every day that you, I... I talk to you or open up an Instagram and see what you did next or I just never know what new thing is going to be there for me to be proud of. Aw, thanks, Mom. Thank you. <laughs> Calm down. Wait a second. I'm so happy you came to visit us for my birthday this week. Yes, it's Mom's birthday this week, so I came down to North Carolina to visit them. We've always been the Three Musketeers, so thank you guys for watching this q and I hope you guys liked it. Next time I'm back, we'll have to do another one with these two. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this, please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and we'll see y'all real soon. See you soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Want to be part? Uh, am I on the thing? Okay. You're on it, Dad. Okay. Be part of the crowd, but don't be the crowd. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It means, means. question. Wow. I think you may have to block some of this out. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. I'm you know? good. I'm doing good. It looks terrible. I have a double chin. Because <laughs> you pretty. know why? You didn't put the camera in the right position. I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm so. School. What I was your hardest challenge? I should cut off my question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Old. I was nine months old and I said linoleum. Linoleum. Why? I yeah, don't know. You just took book. words from when we were talking about the fixing the apartment and